Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Extreme Performance Series. I'm Todd Muirhead, and today I have with me Mark. Thanks for having me. Um, I work in the performance group, same team as Todd, uh, outbound, and so I do a lot of interesting things. But I've spent a lot of it, uh, quite a bit of time recently here on latency sensitive applications and looking at these things at scale. And uh, just had some interesting information to share today. All right, well, let's get right to it. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to quickly chat about here is what do I mean by a latency sensitive application? Because again, not everything qualifies here. And so this is a workload that doesn't really consolidate or share hardware well, right? So these are the applications that people are saying need dedicated hardware. They're using some form of pass through. Uh, they typically require very deterministic network performance, right? So maybe they're UDP based, they can tolerate no packet loss, very low jitter. I know and super time sensitive when we talk about transactions or some of the latencies, we're talking about tens or hundreds of microseconds. And these workloads typically demand a lot of compute. And you know, examples of, of verticals we might see these in is within the financial space, either trading or market data, you know, media and entertainment, you know, certainly the uh, transcoding uh, and uh, transmission. And real-time automation, you know, those organizations that are uh, supplying platforms that do plant control or SCADA control and things like that. So um, a very narrow vertical, but very important and definitely highly virtualizable. Yeah, so I think it's important what you just said. So just because it's a high performance app doesn't mean it's a latency sensitive app. There's actually a, it's actually a, a different type of app. It's good, good for people to understand that. Exactly. This is not something that the guidance we'll talk about here is not something we want to use for everything. Because again, it really, uh, it would degrade consolidation, for instance. Uh, and, you know, so we need to use a piece of hardware. Uh, and so we want to use it very uh, specifically. So let's talk about maybe a couple of items here. So I kind of look at it as a design, configure, and operate model. And so if we want to design an environment that will host these applications properly, right? Hardware is important. Uh, you know, all processors aren't equal. All processors might have higher uh, core counts or higher clock frequencies. And so we want to make a very um, prescribed approach on the hardware platform we'll run this on. And we want to talk about building the VM appropriately. And so here we want to make the VM, we want to size it for peak and hopefully fit it into a NUMA node uh, if we can. And what's really important is this VM needs to be sized properly to the host. And what I mean by this is, uh, the last point says, we're doing work on behalf of that VM. Because it's latency sensitive, we also have to do IO completions on it in the network and storage stack. So we need host processors available to do that. And so the sizing of the VM in relation to the host is really a critical piece of this recipe here. And then a couple of you know quick interesting points about configuring here. And so obviously we've done a lot of work uh, driven out of our telco business uh, from the uh, vSphere 7, say U3 era to vSphere 8. So these platforms are the ones that will really host this low latency app well. And we need to tune the BIOS, you know, to best support that as well too. Again, it's not all about virtualization, it's about managing the hardware, uh, making sure that the hardware, for instance, network stacks, you know, rings are tuned up. And then it, as we come back to the virtual side of the house, again, what's really important for us is we get that V topology correct. And, and folks have heard me talk about this many times, you know, the number of V sockets by V cores, that presentation affects the guest OS performance and affects application performance. And so we need to get that correct and then use our latency sensitive control, uh, which is a policy-based control we have per VM that requires a full CPU and memory reservation. And once we kind of put these components together, there's not a lot of configuration required here, but that will really set up this workload uh, to be configured for success. So Mark, with, uh, with vSphere 8, we talked about this in a video uh, last year. They have the uh, auto V topology setting, which will will select that for you automatically. And you could use that here, correct? Yes, the V topology setting, our new feature for vSphere 8, yeah, is exactly provided for this circumstance. We want those VMs to be configured optimally. We make those decisions based off of the hardware. And yeah, we're very happy to provide that in an automated fashion now. And so once we've kind of have the right platform, once we've configured things correctly, you know, operate is important here. And I really wanted to talk about this for a second because it's about our shared world. So when we use a latency sensitive control on a VM, those vCPUs get direct access to P cores. Uh, so the scheduler is out of the way. And so we know there's no contention in that stack anymore. But when we do work on behalf of that VM, so we're completing network I or storage IOs, 
right? We have worlds, we have threads that are doing some of that work and we can't afford any scheduling contention on those worlds. And that's where we need to have extra host capacity to support that, to make sure that they're scheduled without that level of contention. And so those worlds have things like in ready time as well too. And we can monitor those using something like a net stats to see that for network, well, you know, transmission and, and receive threads. And so I think that's, you know, really important in the operate here is not only kind of look at the VM, which should be, uh, you know, generally well set up, but to look at the world supporting that VM uh, on behalf of it now. And so just one quick data point I wanted to leave everybody with here. Uh, this was a test that we did where we're looking at bare metal performance versus virtualized. And this happens to be on our 70U3 platform. Uh, and this was the OSLAT uh, micro benchmark that we're using. And what we see here is that basically we're at bare metal performance. And so this is a measure of some of the latency time that will be involved. And we can see here, you know, on the bottom chart that we actually do as well, or sometimes a little bit better than the bare metal. And that was because we we're using a, a pole mode driver system here, but we can see, you know, latency, we're down in the microseconds range. And so I think this is, uh, you know, an excellent data point that says we can do this very successfully we can work with and are working with these industries uh, and virtualizing these applications. So certainly all the other you know, easy uh, workloads should fall to virtualization. And even these challenging ones that have been in the past for us, uh, we're doing successfully today. So Mark, I got a couple of questions for you. The first is, um, I think we've come a long way in this space and I think you've been working in this space for a while. So where would you contrast where we were say five you know, seven years ago to today in terms of being able to support these types of uh, latency sensitive apps? I'd say it's certainly a night and day difference. You know, in the past four or five years ago, uh, the, we would consider these a challenging workload and we were looking at them and POCing them very carefully. And we we're using, you know, some dedicated hardware and we were still using pass through, right? And you know, our, our direct path where maybe the network adapters were going right into a VM. And now contrast that with today, where we want to use full virtualization for all the benefits, you know, we can do that. So these VMs are operating to, together, not in a highly consolidated scenario, but we have many of these VMs working on a host, managing that capacity. We're not having to use pass through and we're able to very successfully take these workloads on. So we've moved from that idea of POCing and seeing how they work to now we have these workloads in production. And again, a lot of work drawn upon our efforts with uh, financial organizations with our telco spaces, and we know that that's very demanding. And so we now have proof points and kind of showing that. So where before, you know, we'd hesitate and say, let's not go after those in an enterprise organization, you know, confidently today we can say, Let, let's do those. If you want to virtualize them, we can today. And then my other question was, what, what resources would you recommend for people who want to <clears throat> who want to dive into this latency sensitive thing? If they do have a good candidate, how would they best get started and 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 how to go about tuning their environment for that? Beyond just watching uh, this video. <laughs> Excellent question. We have um, so if you do it vmware.com slash go slash perf, that will take you to a lot of our performance information. Uh, we have a number of white papers uh, there that show. Uh, you know, if you were to Google uh, latency sensitive applications, uh, virtualizing latency sensitive applications, we have a couple of white papers that are uh, dated vSphere 6 and 7 era that are still applicable today. We're remodeling those. We hope to have some of those available launch soon for vSphere 8 as well. But uh, the information in the tunium is uh, totally applicable still. So we have uh, great uh, guides to already reference. Well, Mark, thank you so much for coming and talking to us about latency sensitive applications. I know I learned a few things. Hope everybody else did too. Thanks, Todd. All right. Thanks, everybody. And we will see you again on another episode of the Extreme Performance Series.